we were discussing about the minor losses in a piping system and uh, we took an example of flow through a sudden expansion. We will take another example flow through a sudden contraction. So, for flow through a sudden contraction, the idea is that the fluid is flowing from a pipe of a larger size to a pipe of a smaller size and when the fluid is flowing in that way, let us see that uh, what happens to the streamlines. We have encountered such cases earlier and from our previous experience we know that the streamlines first of all they will tend to get converged because the area is suddenly reducing. Then that tendency of convergence will continue till it comes to a minimum distance of separation between the extreme streamlines that location is known as vena contractor. So, the same thing happens here and beyond that the streamlines diverge. So, let us say that this is the location of the vena contractor. So, uh, we call this area as say AC and let us say the average velocity of flow uh, across this one is Vc and let us say that uh, D1 and D2 are the diameters of the pipes 1 and 2 and V1 and V2 are the corresponding velocities average velocities. So, you have V1 average and V2 average. Now, interestingly we may observe one thing that when you have this type of flow, then in the first part the streamlines are sort of converging. So, that means when it is converging the area is re reducing and the velocity is increasing. So, it is a sort of accelerating flow and as if there is a favorable pressure gradient that is accelerating the flow. Beyond the vena contractor it is expanding and the situation gets completely reversed and the situation beyond the vena contractor is as if it is flow through an expansion. So, it is not a geometrical expansion induced by the uh, configuration of the system but because of the expansion in the configuration of the streamlines. So, uh, here whatever losses may be there may be attributed to that expansion. So, uh, somewhat non intuitively for loss for flow through a sudden contraction is basically th because of an expansion. So, the loss is mainly attributed to whatever is happening here which is nothing but an expansion. So, uh, whatever uh, expression that we could derive for loss because of sudden expansion that the same uh, expression we may apply here. So, what was the head loss expression that we used for this one or we derived for this one that was like sort of uh, here V1 will be Vc minus V2 whole square by 2g. Now, you can always write V c and V 2 in terms of A c and A 2. So, you can write A c into V c is equal to A 2 into V 2 which means you have V c is equal to A 2 by A c into V 2. If you recall the area of the vena contractor divided by the area of the corresponding conduit was known as the contraction coefficient or cc. So, this is 1 by cc into v2. Therefore, the head loss will become 1 by cc minus 1 whole square into v2 square by 2g. Now, therefore, this head loss will uh, explicitly depend on what is the value of the contraction coefficient and accordingly one may 
write it in the form of as a fraction of the kinetic energy at 2. Now, there are extreme cases like as you have cases for uh, certain expansion where the ratio of the diameters is uh, greatly varying. Here also you can have a case where you have say uh, d1 by d2 tending to infinity. This is a special case. So, in general the form is like this is like k. So, it is like k v2 square by 2g. The value of k will depend on the contraction coefficient and in such a case when d1 by d2 tends to infinity, it is found experimentally that k is very close to 0.5. So, this case like uh, d1 by d2 tends to infinity, what does it show? It represents a equivalent situation that there is a reservoir from which fluid is entering a pipe, where the reservoir size is much much larger than the diameter of the pipe. So, in that case this loss is known as entry loss, because we have discussed about an exit loss. So, entry and exit are always relative to the pipe. So, here the fluid is entering the pipe from a larger reservoir. So, this is known as entry loss. So, the concepts of entry and exit loss are somewhat uh, similar. I, one is like fluid is entering the pipe from a reservoir. So, that is entry loss and exit is fluid is exiting from the pipe to another reservoir. And uh, in either of these cases, it is a sudden expansion and contraction that we are keeping in mind. And as we have just discussed that loss due to sudden contraction is basically due to a sudden expansion. Now, uh, it is not always that you have a sudden expansion and contraction as the only possibilities because of which there are minor losses. So, minor losses may be present because of many other things. So, other sources of minor losses are like presence of valves. So, if there are valves in a pipeline, so what does a valve do? So, if you have a pipeline say like this and you put a valve in the pipeline. We are not drawing a valve in a proper detailed manner, but just let us say this is a schematic way of representing. So, let us say that this is a physical obstruction. So, when this is lifted, the entire fluid may flow. When this is uh, put down, depending on the extent to which it is put down, it will restrict the motion of the flow or motion of the fluid. Therefore, valves uh, somehow uh, they may restrict the motion and because of that there may be a pressure drop across it. So, it, it may act like an orifice where uh, it is a reduced size of the, uh, of the area available for flow. And that uh, because of that uh, as we have seen in our earlier examples in flow measuring devices, in such cases you may have losses. So, valves will also have losses, then you may have elbows. So, what are the elbows? These are fittings which try to accommodate a change in direction of the pipeline. So, you have a say a pipeline like this and you want the flow direction to change like this. So, what you do? You fit a piece which may be somewhat like this. So, this type of piece is known as a 90 degree elbow. The name 90 degree is quite clear uh, that the change in angle here uh, that is experienced by the flow is 90 degree. So, this is a 90 degree elbow. So, in this way you may have elbows of various degrees. So, this uh, such things like valves, elbows, these, these things are known as fittings of a pipe. So, when you have a pipeline, you just do not have an isolated pipe, but you have uh, certain things which fit with the piping system and those are known as fittings. So, for all these, uh, it is not so easy to calculate uh, or rather write analytically exactly the expression for the loss, but uh, one may have a 
whole amount of experimental or computationally available data and from that the loss is somehow characterized as k into v square by 2g. The idea is straightforward that you are try, trying to write the loss as in proportion to the kinetic energy head and the motivation is that in the previous cases, in all cases we, we could successfully write the loss in, in this form k into v square by 2g. But here the k is not something which is straightforward or analytically determined, but it comes from experiments and many other considerations. So this k is known as a loss coefficient. So typically whenever uh, one is dealing with an engineering analysis of a piping system and there are fittings, there are piping handbooks uh, which refer to the loss coefficients based on what fittings that you are using and uh, one may refer to that data from the piping handbooks and those database, uh, databases those have been created by lots of experimentation or uh, these days also by computer simulation and uh, important is to get a value of this one. In many other cases it is uh, also written in an equivalent form like it is uh, written in some L equivalent by D into V square by 2G this form because we have seen that uh, this is also another way of writing the loss F L by D into V square by 2G. So in if it is written in that way uh, then this uh, sometimes is known as equivalent length of uh, as if there was an it was replaced by a pipe of some length and that would have created some loss. But more commonly it is uh, the loss coefficient that is quoted and that is used. So let us uh, consider one problem where we illustrate how to make use of the concepts of major and the minor losses. <coughs> So we have a piping system like this, uh, it is connecting two reservoirs of large extent, the values of the kinematic viscosity, uh, the value of the kinematic viscosity is given. The pipe is made of cast iron with uh, following characteristics, the average surface roughness 0 0.26 millimeter. The total length of the piping system is 20 meter and <coughs> then the flow rate that we expect from this system is 0 0.002 meter cube per second and the loss coefficient for the elbows is 1.5. The thing is that what should be a good design of the diameter of the pipe, okay. It's a pipe of uniform size, but it has certain bends and turns, okay. So first of all, let us say that uh, the name of the reservoir in the left is A and the name of the reservoir in the right is B, okay. So let us say this is reservoir A, this is reservoir B. What would be the direction of the flow from reservoir A to B or B to A? B to A, right? Because you have a natural head 
available in, in form of a potential energy head. And if you want to have a flow from A to B, that also could be possible if you had a pump at, at, at some place which will energize it to overcome that uh, deficit in the height. So, when there is flow from B to A, let us say that you write the energy equation with losses which is like the equivalent modified Bernoulli's type of equation uh, for flow from say 1 to 2. So, essentially what you write P1 by rho g plus V1 square by 2 g plus Z1 is equal to P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2 g plus Z2 plus the summation of head losses. We are technically to be correct you have to use the kinetic energy correction factor at these places, but if you see here that that will not be important let us write just for the sake of writing it properly. If you assume, so first of all we are neglecting the unsteadiness in, in this case. So, we are assuming that these are very large diameters as compared to the diameter of the pipe. So, it is as if there is a slow change uh, in whatever change in the height of these reservoirs that is not very significant that is uh, almost like negligible. So, if that is there that means the corresponding velocities of these uh, of these free surfaces are much negligible as compared to the flow velocities in the pipeline. Then you basically neglect these terms these are small. both P1 and P2 are same which is P atmosphere. So, you have Z1 minus Z2 that is H is summation of the head losses. So, what are the head losses? So, uh, now you tell first of all let us consider the major loss. So, head loss first of all if you write the major loss what is the major loss? It is of the form F L by D V square by 2 G where V is the velocity of flow through average velocity of flow through the pipe. Total length of the pipe is given. So, this is major loss then minor loss. What are the sources of minor losses? First, so you follow do not do it haphazardly follow the path of the flow. So, first when the fluid enters here, this is an entry loss. So, what is that? 0.5 V square by 2 G. Then it encounters some number of elbows. How many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right. So, you have 6 90 degree elbows for which you have each as k elbow as the loss coefficient into v square by 2 g. Then there is a exit loss. Okay. So, what is the exit loss? v square by 2 g right. So, this is a major loss, this is <coughs> entry, this is elbow and this is exit. So, from this what uh, what you can find out is of course, q is given. So, you can replace v with 4 q by pi d square, but d is the diameter of the pipe. So, this equation will boil down to what form? Some equation which is a function of f and d that is equal to 0, right. So, function of f and d equal to 0, it will be a just a polynomial function 
and uh, what will be the power of d in that expression? You will have d to the power 5 because you have here v square will bring 1 by d to the power 4 and another d. So, it will be a polynomial d to the power 5 and some function of f together that will be 0. So, how do you then go ahead? What, what extra information you have? You have information on the epsilon. So, what you may do? You may guess a value of the diameter of the pipe. If you get a guess a value of the diameter of the pipe that will give you what is epsilon by the diameter of the pipe. And then you can calculate what is what is the Reynolds number based on the diameter of the pipe. And these two together should give you a value of f from the Moody's diagram. You have to check whether this f it satisfies this or not because this equation is a function of f and d. So, if you substitute d you will get a value of f. So, if it does not satisfy you have to go through this iteration process again and again till it converges. So, uh, let me give you the answer to this problem so that at least you can check whether uh, answers are coming properly. So, for this one the answer is <coughs> the diameter equal to 45 millimeter roughly. Okay. What value you will guess is up to you that is why it is guess. I mean it is obviously the question is when you guess a diameter of a pipe you may uh, I mean if you if you want to have your wildest uh, expression of imagination 1000 kilometer you may start maybe if you want or maybe 1 nanometer if you want. So, all of you have certain common senses and uh, you will always like to exercise the common sense. If you say that how to exercise the common sense uh, since most of us do not have proper common common sense. So, let us see how we do it. So, in this equation you have a function of f and d right. You have common sense values of the friction factor if you look into the Moody's diagram you will see 0 0.002, 0 0.0002 like that. This is just a linear function of that one substitute that f and see what order of magnitude of d satisfies that. So, it will give you a reasonable order of magnitude of d ok. So, that is a common sense way of going for a guess. So, whenever you go for a guess solution it does not have to be a wild guess. I mean it, it has to be a bit of a civilized guess to get some kind of uh, quick answer. So, let us uh, work out another problem. Let us say that you have a horizontal pipeline with uh, diameters of d1 and d2 and the pressures at the two ends are p1 and p2. So, what you have to find out is find the ratio of d1 by d2 so that delta p is a maximum. Delta p is the difference between p 1 and p 2. So, this is very straightforward. forward uh, we will just outline the procedure. So, if you write the modified energy equation between the sections 1 and 2 that is modified equation considering the losses you have p 1 by rho g plus v 1 square by 2 g plus z 1 is equal to p 2 by rho g plus v 2 square by 2 g plus z 2 plus head loss. 
So, it is a horizontal pipeline that is given. So, Z1 and Z2 are the same. So, that you cancel from the two sides. Then you can uh, write say P1 minus P2 by rho G is equal to, now you can express V2 in terms of V1 by noting A1 V1 equal to A2 V2. That means, you have V1 into D1 square is equal to V2 into D2 square. So, you can write V2 square by 2G as V1 square by 2G into D2 4, sorry the other way. d 1 to the power 4 by d 2 to the power 4 and then you have minus 1 for 1 v 1 square by 2 g. Then what is this head loss? This is just v 1 minus v 2 whole square by 2 g, this is certain expansion loss. The lengths are not substantial to have major losses as important. So, here this is an example where we see that minor loss is the dominating one. So, the length is so short that the loss due to the length is not, of course it is there but that may be neglected as compared to this loss. So, the, this also you can write in terms of V1 square by 2G into 1 minus V2 by V1 <coughs> that is uh, D1 square by D2 square, D square. Then uh, I need not work it out further, it is uh, a very simple exercise, you just consider say d1 by d2 equal to x. So, it is a function of x only for maximum of this, the derivative with respect to x should be 0. So, that will give you the value. Okay. <coughs> now, next what we have seen in these uh, examples that uh, what, what are the major and the minor losses and how they are taken into account. And again that important uh, consideration that minor losses did not always be minor. Minor losses sometimes are much much more significant than the so called major losses. Next we will look into cases. So, here we have till now considered cases of isolated uh, single pipes, but in a system, in a piping system there may be a number of pipes and these pipes may be connected in series or parallel just in the same way as electrical resistors are connected. So, then what would be that equivalent piping network is just like an equivalent electrical circuit network and we will see briefly the co corresponding ideas for pipes in series and pipes in parallel. So, first pipes in series. So, pipes in series it means that you have uh, let us say that you have two pipes like this. The name series is obvious they are connected one after the other. So, you have uh, let us say that the diameter of the first pipe D1, the average velocity V1, <coughs> length L1, friction factor F1 and for the pipe 2 corresponding things are there. What is the, so when we consider these pipes in series and parallel in this analysis, the analysis that we are presenting as a theoretical uh, development, we are not considering the minor losses, we are considering the only the major losses. So, the head loss for the pipe 1, what is that? F1 L1 by D1 into V1 square by 2G. What is V? V is 4Q by pi D square. So, in terms of the flow rate, so F1 L1 V square will be 16 Q square. <coughs> so, 16 F1 L1 Q square. Then 2G 
pi square d1 to the power 5, okay, where q is the flow rate which is going through each of these pipes. So, when they are in series, what is the common thing for them is the flow rate. The same flow rate is going through the two pipes. So, if you have H F 2, you have similar thing 16 F 2 L 2 Q square by 2 G pi square D 2 to the power 5. Now, what is the concept of an equivalent pipe? That is, you replace these two pipes in series by a single pipe of some diameter. Let us say D is the equivalent diameter, L E is the equivalent length and F E is the equivalent friction factor such that you have the same flow rate and the same head loss. Okay. So, it is just like an electrical circuit where you are considering the same voltage and same current flowing through that. So, you find out an equivalent resistance sort of thing. So, here it is like uh, the head loss is like the pressure drop which is like a potential drop sort of thing and the flow rate is like a current so to say. It is not exactly analogous mathematically, but it is just another qualitative way of looking into it. <coughs> so, when you have this H f as uh, expressed as the head loss in this equivalent situation, then H f must be equal to the sum of H f 1 and H f 2. So, if you write H f for the equivalent pipe, it is a single pipe of length L e. So, from this you can write 16 F E L E same Q is there by 2 G pi square D E to the power 5 equal to 16 F 1 L 1 Q square by 2 G pi square D 1 to the power 5 plus 16 F 2 L 2 Q square by 2 G pi square D 2 to the power 5. So, from this what we can get? We can get a very important expression that F e L e by d e to the power 5 is equal to F 1 L 1 by d 1 to the power 5 plus F 2 L 2 by d 2 to the power 5. So, in general you have if you have n number of such pipes in series, you have F e L e by d e to the power 5 is equal to summation of f i l i by d i to the power 5 i equal to 1 to n. So, as if it is like a equivalent resistance as the sum of the resistances that is uh, a simple way of looking into it. Now, let us look into pipes in parallel. So, when you have pipes in parallel, let us try to make a sketch of uh, maybe a situation like this. So, you have two pipes which are sort of connected in parallel. That means, say they are branching off from just let me <coughs> sketch it in a bit of a different way. So, let us say that you have uh, pipes uh, through which some fluid flow Q uh, is coming there. Now, uh, you have two pipes with say diameters D 1 length L 1. So, length L 1 means not just straight portion plus also the curved portion all those taken together D 1 L 1 and the friction factor F 1. Second pipe D 2 L 2 friction factor F 2. So, now, uh, so these pipes both are connected across these two points which are shown as cross. So, what you can say 
that uh, let us say that q1 is the flow rate through this one, q2 is the flow rate through this one. So, you can say that q is equal to q1 plus q2, if you consider the node which is given by the cross just like Karshoff's current law. So, the q is uh, distributed as q1 and q2. Then uh, <coughs> what about the head loss? Head losses are the same because eventually you are talking about the difference in energy between these two points no matter whether you, you traverse by the upper pipe or the lower pipe eventually you end up at the same point and the loss of energy uh, therefore should be same as what you calculate from here or what you calculate from here. So, you have HF1 is equal to HF2. So, these are basic equations and from that you can find out the equivalent length of the pipe. So, uh, <coughs> you have and for the equivalent pipe you have say HF equal to HF1 equal to HF2 and Q equal to Q1 plus Q2. So, what is the HF of the equivalent pipe? <coughs> 16 Fe Le Q square by 2 g pi square d e to the power 5, right. This is the h f of the equivalent pipe. This is equal to h f 1 that is 16 f 1 l 1 q 1 square by 2 g pi square d 1 to the power 5 and this is also equal to h f 2. Okay. So, this is H f 1, this is H f 2. Let us say that each is equal to some constant k. And this 16 by 2 g pi square, this is a term which is like a constant for all, let us call it a c. So, you can write uh, this is q2. So, you can write uh, q1 is equal to or q1 square is equal to k into d1 to the power 5 by f1 l1 c, right. Similarly, q2 is equal to k into d2 to the power 5 by C f 2 L 2 and Q is K d e to the power 5 by C f e L e. Hmm? Q 2 square yes right. Since you have Q equal to Q 1 plus Q 2, you have from these expressions root over d e to the power 5 by f e L e is equal to root over d 1 to the power 5 by f 1 l 1 plus root over d 2 to the power 5 by f 2 l 2, okay. The other terms get cancelled out. So, these are expressions for the equivalent, the relationship between the equivalent and the original ones in terms of the respective diameters and the friction factors. So, with this background let us try to work out a few problems where we have the uh, pipes connected in maybe series or parallel. So, you have two pipes, two pipelines and uh, these two pipes, the upper one is D1 is equal to <coughs> 15 centimeter 
and length is 150 meter. The friction factor is a constant which is 0 0.018. The other pipe is uh, the diameter D2 is 12 centimeter, the length L2 is 150 meter and the friction factor is the same 0 0.018. It is given that Q1 is equal to Q2. You have to find out what is the loss coefficient of this valve. Okay. So, uh, the approach is very straightforward. You uh, see why I am illustrating this problem is the whole idea is never get tempted to use a formula which is which is ready made available with you. There is a formula which is ready made available with you and you might be tempted to use that. What should prevent you from being uh, tempted with that is that here you have a minor loss that is not considered in this formula. Okay. So, uh, if you use that formula it will give you an uh, erroneous uh, solution, but obviously the concept of pipes in parallel you may use. So, what, what are the things you have? HF1 equal to HF2, not just HF, the total head loss, so not just the friction loss. So, H loss 1 is equal to H loss 2. So, what is H loss 1? You have F1 L1 by D1, or we write in terms of Q 16 F1 L1 Q1 square by 2 g pi square d 1 to the power 5 plus the k valve into v square by 2 g. So, v 1 square by 2 g is as good as v 1 is 4 q by pi d square. So, 16 q 1 square by pi square d 1 to the power 4 2 g that is v 1 square by 2 g is equal to the head loss at 2 that is 16 f 2 l 2 by 2 g pi square d 2 to the power 5 into q 2 square right and it is given that q 1 equal to q 2 given. So, you can cancel that from the two sides and get the value of the k valve straight away a very simple exercise the answer is k valve is 18.62. Okay. Next we work out another problem. You have two pipes of length L and diameters D1 and D2, and they are arranged in parallel. When they are arranged in parallel, the loss of head for a particular flow rate q, q is the flow rate, the loss of head is h 1 and the same pipes when they are arranged in series, the loss of head is h 2. It is given as d 1 by d 2 is equal to 2. Fine h 1 by h 2, <coughs> neglect the minor losses and assume a constant friction coefficient to be the same for all the pipes. So, the two important assumptions that minor losses are neglected and number 2 friction coefficient 
uh, or the friction factor is a constant and that constant value is same for all the pipes. Okay. Under which conditions friction factor you have a constant virtually? For very high Reynolds number highly turbulent flow it will become only a function of epsilon by d. So, uh, but here the diameters are changing. So, we are assuming that epsilon is also different for the two pipes such that epsilon by d remains the same so that the friction factor remains the same. So, when the two pipes are uh, connected in series, so you can work this out uh, through the equivalent resistance concept. So, uh, when they are in series, you have what is the condition for the equivalent F e L e by D to the power 5 is equal to F 1 L 1 by D 1 to the power 5 plus F 2 L 2 by D 2 to the power 5. This is for the series. And uh, now the equivalent things, the equivalent uh, thing has combinations of 3 parameters. And see it is not important what are the individual values of these parameters. It is important that you collectively choose them to satisfy this constraint that should be good enough. That means you may choose your equivalent friction factor or equivalent length in such a way that uh, you will get some equivalent diameter or you may choose equivalent friction factor and equivalent diameter as to be something so as to get some equivalent length. So, you may take any of these out of 3 2 very freely and the third one you get from this expression. Let us say that we assume that uh, the two pipes are of the same length right. So, let us consider that uh, L e or in fact if you see that it is F e L e by d to the power 5 that is going to be solely important for the head loss. So, even if you do not assume any particular value that will not matter. So, if you consider the head loss what is that? 16 F e L e q square by 2 g pi square d e to the power 5 right. So, in place of uh, so you can clearly see that you get an expression where you have F e L e by d e to the power of 5. So, let us say that you write in, in place of that 16 q square by 2 g pi square then you write F 1 L 1 by D 1 to the power 5 plus F 2 L 2 by D 2 to the power 5. This is a given as H 2, this is series. If they are in parallel, again H F formula is the same but expression for so this you have 16 q square by 2 g pi square then you have 1 by d to the power 5 by f e l e right and that you can substitute in place of this one that is d e to the power 5 by F e L e and this is given as H 2 sorry this is given as H 1. Just you divide by these two and uh, you will get a ratio when you divide you will get a ratio of d 1 d by d 2 and L 1 and L 2 are the same. So, that ratio will uh, give a number. So, this when you divide you will just get a number F 1 and F 2 are the same. So, those effects will cancel and it will be expressed solely in the as a function of D 1 by D 2 if you write H 1 by H 2. So, the H 1 by H 2 the answer is zero point zero two one eight eight. that is the answer. Let us work out maybe another problem.
the problem statement is like this that initially, so you can see that here there are pipes A, D, B, D and D, C. So, this is just shown by schematic, so not the width is, uh, with being shown. So, here initially only the part AC was there, there was no branch B, D and then the flow rate was 100 liter per second that is given. So, Q0 is 100 liter per second and the length of AC is 1000 meter that is 1 kilometer. To increase the flow rate another pipe B D is added, okay. estimate the length of the new pipe that is the problem all diameters are equal. So, all diameters are equal and assume the same length for all the pipes. Uh, not for all the pipes that is L1 equal to L2 that is same length for the two parallel pipes and same friction factor for all pipes. So, friction factors are also equal okay. and it is given that there is a 30 percent enhancement in the flow rate because of this. So, you have to find out basically L1 and L2 that is the question. So, let us say that there is a flow rate Q1 through L1 and Q2 through L2 and the total Q is sum of Q1 and Q2. So, then you can uh, write, so the head losses if you neglect this elevation difference, the head losses should be <coughs> what? the head loss for AD and head loss, loss for BD, they should be the same, they are like pipes in parallel. So, the, if their head losses are same, head loss is function of Q, F and L. So, uh, you have F and L are same, therefore Q should be same. So, HF AD equal to HF BD that will give you Q1 equal to Q2 and therefore, you have Q3 which is either equal to 2Q1 or 2Q2 all the same. Then what is the total head loss that is capital H. So, we will not write the modified equation in all details you have just seen that this capital H would, should be compensating the total head loss. So, the head loss in AD plus the head loss in D C right. So, this will be a function of Q 3 because head loss in A D is a function of Q 1, Q 1 may be expressed as a function of Q 3 and head loss in D C is a function of Q 3 and <coughs> the head loss when this branch system was not there still the head loss would be the same right. So, when B D is not there, then the head loss is the head loss for the length A C with the original flow rate as Q 0. So, 16 <coughs> F L, L is L 1 plus L 3 <coughs> into Q 0 square by 2 G pi square into D to the power 5. And it is given as that uh, there is a 30 percent enhancement in Q that means Q 3 by Q 0 is 1.3. So, from that you can find out the missing length. You have to keep in mind that total L 1 plus L 3 is 1000 meter. So, just assume these as some x and this is 1000 minus x and this is also then x. You can solve for that remaining things are given. Let us maybe look into another problem very briefly. <coughs> so, let us say that you have uh, two pipes 
or a pipeline, it has a diameter say d0 and the velocity v0. It is having some length say L0. To increase the flow rate, a new arrangement is made. What is the new arrangement? The new arrangement is a branch is taken away from the midpoint of this one. So, this is L0, this is L0 by 2 and this is L0 by 2. So, uh, <coughs> the diameter is the same, the diameter is D0 for the second arrangement as well. You have to find the change in flow rate, say here flow rate is Q0, here the flow rate is Q1. So, you have to find out what is Q1 by Q0 given HF1 is equal to or HF0 is equal to HF1. Okay. So, this is a straightforward pipe uh, series parallel problem. So, only thing is what you do? You replace this by an equivalent pipe. So, if you replace this by an equivalent pipe, these are two pipes in parallel. So, root over d e to the power 5 by f e l e is equal to root over d 1 to the power 5 by f 1 l 1 plus root over d 2 to the power 5 by f 2 l 2. Here all f's are the same. Let us consider that the equivalent friction uh, coefficient also the same. L 1 is what? L 0 by 2, L 2 is L 0 by 2, D 1 and D 2 are the same which is equal to D, same diameter pipe. So, this is D to the power 5, this is D to the power 5. <coughs> so, uh, let us say that the equivalent diameter is also D. So, you can find out an equivalent length in terms of as a function of L0, right. So, then this entire pipe as if is replaced by a pipe of length L0 plus L equivalent and you have HF1 is equal to 16 F L0 plus L equivalent so <coughs> by into Q square by 2 g pi square d to the power 5 and h f 0 is 16 f oh sorry this is l 0 by 2 l 0 by 2 plus l equivalent <coughs> sorry this is l 0 by 2 just correct it this is l 0 by 2 half half. So, 16 f l 0 q 0 square by 2 g pi square d to the power 5 from here since these two are equal you can find out what is q 1 by q 0. The answer is that the increment is 26.48 percent. Okay. So, this is just very simple equivalent pipe system analysis. So, let us stop here today or for this lecture and we will continue with the next lecture with a new topic. Thank you.